Hello and good evening. I'm Larry Bridgewater, standing in for Eli's Focus, and this is Show Up Hill Tonight with special guest Jeffrey Chaucer. I love that Chaucer cat. Right back at you, Larry. Good evening. Tonight we have an exclusive interview with Jeffrey Chaucer. So, Mr. Chaucer. Please, call me Chaucer. Okay, Chaucer, tell me about yourself. I was born in London, which is in England, in 1342. My father, John Chaucer, was a successful vintner. In 1357, I became a page in the household of Prince Lionel, who later became the Duke of Clarence, whom I have dedicated my service in the armed forces for many years. I enlisted with the real army of Edward III in France, where I was captured by the aromatically challenged French. Due to good fortune, I was ransomed. And we thank that good fortune to this day. Without it, you would never have begun to work on your book, The Canterbury Tales. Yes, yes. During my mortal tenure, I was only able to complete about ten fragments of my scathing tell-all. Above the famous pilgrimage, the pilgrims who came from all layers of society tell stories to each other to kill time while we travel to the shrine of Thomas of Becket. Very interesting. I love the colorful language. It is written in English and in white. So tell me, how did it all begin? It was in April of 1370... <coughs> at the infamous Tabard Inn, located in the Hamsburg district in Southwark. It's right across from the Thames. Due to time constraints and legal issues, my publisher and I decided to describe only 29 of the characters, and all of which have different professions, though, as I admit, most of them were a little on the dishonest side. We were gracious enough to have the tavern owner, Harry Bailey, join us. And we forced him to become our leader, as we had no idea where we were going. It was a rocking good time. Little did I know, actually, that he was receiving a kickback from my publisher for his proposal that each pilgrim tell two stories. Two on the way up and two on the way back. My contribution was that such that the validity of the tales stayed intact and they would repeat them word for word no matter the frank language. It was then that the tavern owner came up with the idea that the winner shall receive a supper at the other pilgrim's expense. Oh, what a row he created. Hmm, yes. Very exciting indeed. Who did you meet and what stories did they tell? Well, due to the time constraint of my untimely death, I can give you a brief overview of each story. Go ahead, then. Another favorite of mine from the first fragment was the miller. It goes something like this. A sword in a buckler bar he wore by his side. A white coat and a blue hood where he. A bagpipe well could he blow and sound. And therewithal he brought us out of town. That was nice. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> what fantastic characters. Oh, ribbing. Who was that last one again? Oh, just the sensuous prioress. What's her story? It's this. In far off Asia, a little child walks through the ghetto on his way to school, singing Alma Redemptoris, a famous song. As he goes, the Jews, outraged, Hire a man to kill the child, who seizes them, cuts his throat, and throws his body in the privy. The child's distraught mother searches for him throughout the ghetto. Wondrously, the child begins to sing. There, the child explains that the Virgin Mary laid a grain upon his tongue, and he will sing until it is removed. When the grain is then removed, the child gives up the ghost, and then becomes a martyr. Amazing. Simply amazing. I wish we had more time. Me too. Having more time, you can tell us about the other characters. Well, we had the Reeve, the cook, the wife of Bath. There was a summoner who journeyed with us, a clerk, a merchant, a squire, a Franklin, a physician, Sir Topas, that was a riot, Melby, a monk, two nuns, and a canon all walk into a bar. I've heard that one before. Oh, and the parson, who covered in extensive detail the seven deadly sins. Now, I have a note here stating that you wrote some uh, reaction to your work. Well, Lando, 
It's like this. The church was getting angry at me, and I felt it was my literary right to include the statement my own validity. So I decided to write a retraction. You know, to console my sins and all of that jazz. It sounded a little something like this. Now I pray to him, all that hearken this literary treatise, or read, that if there be anything that it liketh him, that thereof they thank it, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom proceedeth all wit and goodness. And if there be anything that displeases him, I pray him also that they arrest to it the default of mine unknowing, and not to my will, that would full fame have said better if I had any knowledge. For our book saith, All that is written is written for the mercy of God, that ye pray for me that Christ have mercy on me and forgive my guilt, and namely of my translations and indignities of worldly vanities, the which I revoke in my retraction as is the book of Troilus, the book also of fame, and the book of the 25th, ladies, the book of the Duchess, the book of St. Valentine's Day, of the Parliament of Brides, the tales of the Canterbury, that like that soweth into sin, the book of the Leon, and many another book, if they were in my remembrance, and many a song, and many a lecherous lay, that Christ for his great mercy may forgive me of sin. But of the translation of the Boetche de Cosciance and other books of legends and saints and homilies and mortality and devotion, that I thank our Lord Jesus Christ in his blissful mood and all the saints of heaven, be seeking them, and they from the henceforth unto my life and sent me grace to belay my guilties and to study to the salvation of my soul and grant me grace a very penchance, confession, and satisfaction to do in this present life. Though the benign grace of him that is the king of kings and priest over all priests that bowed us with the precious blood of his heart, so that it may have been one of them on the day of doom that shall be saved. Que cum patre et spiritus sanctu vivit et regnat Deus Per omnia secula. Amen. Whoa, that was quite a lot of wordology there, but very beautifully spoken and written. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd wish to add? Not really, besides to read my Canterbury Tales. But don't take my word for it. You can check out a copy at your local library. I only warn you not to get too lost in the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for tonight's edition of Schwofield Tonight's Special Interviews. Join us next time for an exclusive interview with myself from the future, along with the CEO of Schwofield.com, as well as a special visit from a local actress slash murder slash pedophile, Lady Lena. Thank you all for tuning in, and good night. And a good night to you too, Leif! Every rose has its thorn. Right,